Hey guys, Tonic here. Fallout games have always been known to have all sorts of easter eggs and pop culture references, so I thought today we could hop in and check out some of the coolest ones in Fallout 76. Up first we have an awesome reference to the movie and book The Shining by Stephen King. Now the location for this easter egg will be at the Torrance house, and even the name of the location sort of ties into the easter egg because that was the main character's last name in the book. Also at this location you are going to find a red tricycle and some blocks that spell out the word red rum, or murder backwards. As if the tricycle and red rum blocks weren't enough for this easter egg, it even includes a maze out back complete with a dead man holding an axe. Now for the next easter egg it's going to be just south of the RNG station right down the road, and this one is of course going to be a reference to the opening scene of Skyrim. Now I actually really like this one, I really like how they took the time to put a mouth gag over the Ulfric character in the carriage, and how they also took the time to bind the hands of the characters inside the carriage. It's just a very nice attention to detail. And if you do make the travel to this location, there is a crossbow that you can loot, which is pretty decent for low level characters. And now a lot of people don't know this, but there's actually another reference to the Elder Scrolls series in Fallout 76. This one is going to be right inside the Mount Blair train yard, and it's actually going to be a reference to the Dark Brotherhood. Now if you don't know the Dark Brotherhood, they're essentially just a super secretive top tier assassin group in the Elder Scrolls universe. They are super cool and probably my favorite faction from that series. Now this easter egg right here is going to show the classic bloody hand signal as well as the words we know on some wooden blocks. This easter egg is super cool and it kind of makes me wish that we had a Dark Brotherhood equivalent in the Fallout universe. The next one is going to take place at the Kanawha County Cemetery, just north of the Nuka-Cola factory. Now this easter egg, I do gotta say, is a pretty dark one. Once you find yourself inside the church, you're gonna find that it is filled with Mothman cultists. These cultists are doing some type of ceremony, so we're gonna have to try and clear them out so we can get a better look at the area. Okay, with the cultists dead, we can finally take a look around the area. And the thing that you're gonna find is a ton of skeletons with a ton of empty glasses around them. And when you approach the area where they get the glasses from, you're gonna find rat poison as well as behind the altar. Like I said earlier, this is about to get pretty dark. This is a reference to the Jonestown Massacre. Jonestown was a real world cult event that took place in the year 1978. It was basically a super religious cult that poisoned its own members by having them drink some type of knockoff Kool-Aid. Now this Kool-Aid was actually laced with potassium cyanide, and over 900 plus people died from this. It is known as the largest modern mass suicide today, and you can even find a pair of patrolman sunglasses around the church as well. Now these sunglasses are important and they also just farther reference this event because the leader of the cult, Reverend Jim Jones, was always known to wear these types of sunglasses. He always had bloodshot eyes from his constant drug use so he'd always try and hide them with these. I will say I do find it very fitting that the Wastelanders update had the Mothman cultist NPCs take over the church, so now this church is once more filled with a crazy cult. I'm not sure if it was intentional but I like to think it was. So now let's hop on to something a little bit more lighthearted. This next one is going to take place in the deep. Once inside, you're going to come across this strange alien-like figure. Now this creature has been named the Mini Interloper by the community. It's the only one in the game and not very much is really known about it. A lot of people think that this is actually from space and is not from Earth, but I don't believe that really at all. I kind of think it resembles a star-nosed mole. As you can see, it kind of has the same facial structure and even the same kind of body shape. It just has a few more legs. I think it'd be really sweet if this was actually tied into the mole miner lore, maybe as this is kind of like their leader or their hive mind, but again, no one really knows. This next one is going to take place at the AVR Medical Center, and this one is one of my personal favorites. If you enter through the main entrance there, you can run right across the hallway and you'll find a Jangles the Moon Monkey plushie with an alien toy on its face. This is of course a reference to one of the best sci-fi movies ever made, Alien. It is a copy of this scene right here where the facehugger alien is trying to implant a xenomorph into its victim. Also kind of weird, if you shoot the alien toy off of the Jangles the Moon Monkey, it kind of freaks out a little bit. Now this next one is going to be another movie reference and it's going to take place right down at the White Springs Golf Club. This is going to be another reference to Stephen King and this one's going to be about the book and the movies It. Now after you clear out all the ghouls, you can head out and find this kitchen. In this kitchen is going to be a fridge with a clown holding a red balloon. Also, if that wasn't enough for this reference, on the wall is going to be a Nuka-Cola sign with the words float. Now float is kind of important in the Stephen King It universe because he's always mentioning they all float or we all float down here and he's talking about the dead bodies that he kills. He puts them in the water so all their bodies are floating. Yeah. It's kind of cool and I honestly think that that sign is a very nice touch for this one. Now this next one is going to take place right here on the map and this one is actually going to be a reference to Alice in Wonderland. This is a reference to the tea party scene where they're having a tea party in the middle of the woods. It's kind of neat. There's actually a ton of hats that match up with the characters in the movie and in the book. It's pretty neat and just really well done. 
Now I saved this one for last because I'm not really sure if it qualifies as an easter egg or a reference. It's just a really strange situation. This is going to take place at the Ohio River Adventures and here you're going to find a raider by the name of Bruiser. This dude looks huge and apparently he was an NFL player before the war. Yeah, you heard that right, take a listen. I don't remember much, but I was a mighty warrior that fought in an arena. Hundreds of people came to watch me from all over. I wore heavy armor, and a band played war music with drums, great, powerful horns. Oh, and beautiful girls. There were beautiful girls doing acrobatics. Those were great times. I had a team, too. Real comrades. We marched into battle together to crush our enemies. There must have been 70 of us. Football? What's that? A game? No. I was a mighty combatant. That sounds like the lousiest game I've ever heard of. I bet those foundation whips play it. So apparently he was an NFL player, but he just doesn't remember it, whether it be from CTE or just that it was a very long time ago. Who knows? But based on his build and the way that he talks, I'm going to assume that he was a tight end. And also, what team did he play on? Was he a college player for the West Virginia Buccaneers or was he a full on NFL player? And if he was an NFL player, hopefully he played for the Buffalo Bills, but most likely not because they're not very close to West Virginia. Also, another very interesting thing about this character is if you go talk to the other people around this area, they're going to say that he was actually from a vault. Bruiser didn't remember much about his life before the vault, not even his name. Been Bruiser ever since. So this makes me wonder, what vault could he possibly be from? I know he's not from Vault 76, he's also not wearing a vault suit, and he's not wearing a pit boy. Most vault dwellers always have pit boys on them, it's kind of like the common staple between them. So was he even from a vault, or is that just a lie? I don't really know, but there is a lot of interesting dialogue if you go talk to him, so if you haven't, I would highly recommend it. But that is pretty much going to do it for this video, so I do want to say a massive thank you to everybody who stuck around and watched. And this video was actually a lot of fun to do. There is a lot more Easter eggs that I didn't decide to cover just because these were the ones I found most interesting. But if you guys do think I missed a very interesting one, for sure let me know down in the comments. I had, like I said, a ton of fun looking at these Easter eggs, so I would be happy to go out there and try and find some more. And maybe I'll even make a part two at some point. And also, as always, a massive thank you to all the channel members who make videos like this possible. Patrick Ruda, 23 Icefire, Raddy Star, Jay Smith, Argent Deer, Bowser Double Frang, Ice Cream Manny, Chris Decker, Robert Kennard, Theodore, Captain Awesome, Digital Aardvark, Lone Samurai OG, DFN Gaming, Chris Mill, and Schwitz. You guys are amazing. I love you guys, and have a good weekend.